Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to my gaming table. So what I'm going to talk about today is the Traders and Barbarians of Catan. It's an expansion for the board game Settlers of Catan. This uh, expansion has a lot of new content. There's nine different ways to play the game, including five different scenarios. These scenarios are worth their own expansion in their own right, but they're all packed into this one expansion. I want to talk about just one of those scenarios. It's called the Rivers of Catan. So the main new thing that we have is we now have two rivers running through Catan. Uh, we have uh, brick, it's just like a normal brick hex. We have ore that works just like ore. We have normal sheep hexes. Uh, what's new and different is we now have two swamp hexes. These swamps don't produce anything, so there's no number on it. One of these swamps replaced the desert, so we're not playing for the desert. Another one of these swamps replaced one of the sheep hexes, so there's one fewer sheep hex in the game. Uh, so, what's the point of this river? Every time a player builds a settlement anywhere touching any one of the rivers, you get one gold for every settlement you build. Every time you build a road along the river, a player also gets another gold. Um, and then there's also bridges. Every player gets three bridges. You cannot build roads on top of the across the river like that. Instead, you have to build a bridge to go over the river. Uh, bridges, the rules for placing bridges is just like roads. They work just like roads, only they cost two brick and one road, one wood instead of one of, one of each like roads do. And the other benefit you get is instead of getting one gold like a road does, you get three gold when you build a bridge. So what do you do with all this gold? You can spend this gold anytime on your turn. You can spend two gold, give it back to the bank, you can choose any resource that you want. So they're very powerful. Uh, gold is very useful. Lots of, opens up a lot of new options for you. Uh, there's one interesting twist though. Whoever has the most gold is the wealthiest settler and gets plus one victory point. Whoever has the least amount of gold is the poorest settler and gets minus two victory points. Uh, the trick is, with the wealthiest settler, there can be only one. If there's a, a tie for whoever has the most gold, no one is the wealthiest settler, and no one gets that extra victory point. However, with poorest settler, there can be multiple poorest settlers if there's a tie for poor, and including if everyone has the same amount of gold, up to a four-way tie for poorest settler. Uh, so every time someone earns gold, sometime, every time someone spends gold, these titles usually shift around. It's sort of a very dynamic game because the point total shift uh, pretty dramatically. Also, I had a very interesting choice, and you really have to manage your resources well because there you have this tension to want to spend gold to get resources, but at the same time you want to manage your gold well so you're not the poorest settler and you want to compete for the wealthiest settler as well. So, there really, that's just about it for all the rules. So, very low amount of rules, but for a lot of fun, makes the game very fast-paced and very dynamic and. It changes a lot throughout the course of the game. We really like playing with it and I highly recommend it.